Okay, welcome to uh, Scripting for Administration, Automation, and Security. We're going to be talking today about Lab 6, which is our Web Authentication Brute Force Attack. Uh, in this lab, we're going to be using Python to uh, construct a, a brute force attack for basic web authentication. Um, so in this lab, uh, some of the first things you want to do is you want to set up uh, your website URL that you're going to want to test. Uh, you can see here I've got a couple different ones. I made uh, a website for uh, uh, an URL that's, that's actually protected. I made one that wasn't protected and then also made one that didn't exist. So that'll test for three different scenarios. Uh, I like to set just a, a quick variable here to say if we found a successful user ID and password combination. Uh, here I'm setting um, a local file path to save our um, any data that we might have, or also read any data, including uh, username and password files. Uh, so you can see here I've made a, a username and password file. You might just use a, a username and password list. Um, you can also try just a single username and password uh, to test it out. Uh, so one of the first things you're going to want to do is uh, read the username and password uh, from a file and put them into a list variable. Uh, depending on whether or not the username and passwords have a new line character at the end, you may need to um, strip those new lines uh, by using uh, the, the read split lines method. Uh, when we're using uh, HTTP basic authentication, uh, it's easiest to use a, a none realm. So here I'm setting the authentication realm uh, to none. I also like to set a, a debug variable. That way I can turn on um, extra output if that debug is true. So you see in a lot of cases there's if debug do something. So that way it's like if debug print this extra information. And then that way I can just turn debug off and uh, the output of the script becomes much, much cleaner. Some URLs, um, or I'm sorry, some modules that we're going to be need to, to use are the URLib2 module, um, the standard sys module. There's also a warnings module. Um, there's a, a kind of an ugly warning with um, URLib2 about using the default realm. You can turn that off uh, by using this line, uh, warnings, filter warnings, ignore the user warning from the urlib2. Uh, so that's just an easy way of, of turning it off, but you need to import that warnings module to use it. So here you see we're going to um, create the request using urlib2 and of our website URL. Um, once we've created that request, we want to actually open that request and put it into a response. So we're doing an URL open um, and putting it into response. Also notice that we're going to be using the try else uh, syntax. So here we're just trying to open it and it shouldn't work. It shouldn't work because authentication is turned on. So the idea here is um, it, you're going to try to open it. It should fail and it should fail because of either an HTTP error or uh, an actual URL error. If it fails because of an HTTP error, we can check and see if there's an HTTP code and a reason. And if there is, uh, we can optionally print out that, that code and reason why it didn't work. Same with the, if there's a, an issue with the URL. We can say an accept in the, the case of an URL error, again, if there's a code and a reason, go ahead and print those out. Um, else everything worked, which is actually what we don't want because that means the web page wasn't password protected. So this is sort of an optional sanity check um, logic that you can put in with the try, accept, and else uh, case syntax. So now we're going to try to open the web page with authentication. And what we're going to be doing then is we're going to be setting up our password manager. Uh, so we're setting up our URLib2 HTTP password manager and just using the default realm. 
Um, we're going to be doing an, uh, a double loop with an, an outer loop and an inner loop. So the outer loop is going to be usernames, and for each of those usernames, we'll have an inner loop with all the passwords. So for each username, we're going to try every password. So the very first thing um, the outer loop is going to try is see, has a solution already been found? So if our found variable has been set to true, we're going to break out of that loop. Um, the inner loop then is for every password, like we said. So now what we're going to do is use our password manager to add a username and password for that website. And we're going to create a handler then to start using that. Um, and then we'll open that website from that handler. Once that's open, now we can use uh, our try except else syntax. So here we're going to say we're going to try to open the web page with the username and password. If it doesn't work, that's okay. We could print out, you know, username and password that failed, but we don't really care about that. Um, otherwise, it works. So we'll set found equals true. And that's going to go through the outer and inner loop. So it's going to try every user ID and every password in your list. Um, once it's found it, what it's going to exit out of both those loops and we can just um, finish up. So we'll say, oh, okay, we found it. It's for this website and here's the username and password that we found. Uh, here's some extra information. Again, this is optional, but if, if you wanted to, you could um, actually then use that username and password to open up the website get the HTML, um, get the uh, response, the server headers, the date, time, all that sort of stuff, and print that out. That's just an optional um, extra bit of information. Uh, actually, and here's the end of the inner loop where we're breaking out of the inner loop because it was um, the user ID and password was found. And that's it. That should finish up um, the syntax for the inner and outer loop and which finishes your script that will go through and brute force using uh, all the usernames and passwords in your list uh, to try to um, brute force a, a basic web auth.